jolly good day to you. Oh no, that was rough. Bob's your uncle, governor. Jeez. Accents and impressions, not my thing. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. <laughs> that wasn't even close. All right, with that, we're stopping right there. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where we sometimes take off our squeaky clean theorist hat, send the cute little theories about Peachy and the Mushroom Kingdom to bed, and get down and dirty to celebrate the seedy criminal underworld of Victorian England. <laughs> Okay, so the seedy criminal underworld of jolly old England is a little less bang and a little more bangers and mash. A little less do-rag and a little more do come again, dearie. A little less bitches be trippin' and a little more britches be slippin'. You get the picture. So I know we've technically done our ritual one episode a year on Assassin's Creed, but there's something really interesting in the new AC game that's coming out, what, tomorrow? Hopefully, if this video gets processed in time. And let's face it, if I'm gonna shamelessly ride the search ability trends for this game title, well, it's now or never, friends. Once that Rad Brad walkthrough gets uploaded, I'm donezo. So let's take a moment to talk about the game. Assassin's Creed has always done a really good job of weaving in real historical context into their overarching storyline of Templars versus Assassins. In every game, you see real historical figures and real-life wars and events that impact the way you play. Even though we've covered the biology of the Assassins, the physics of their moves, and the meta Ubisoft universe, we've never actually talked about the real events happening in the game on a show that's about real events and games. Weird oversight, right? Well, that all ends today. So ready? Here we go. In case you don't already know, AC Syndicate is set in London and has the Assassins and the Templars pitted against each other with rival gangs who are competing to control the city. Based on the trailers, you're gonna see a lot of real historical events happen, but the gangs, the Rooks and the Blighters, aren't real gangs from the time. I mean, even the names sound ridiculous, right? Rooks and Blighters. Way to pick some stereotypically British-sounding words and throw them on there, right? <laughs> nice try, AC, but if you had done a little research, you'd see what real gangs were called. The Peaky Blinders. Isn't that a BBC show? Wait, are, are you kidding me? That's a real gang? sewed razor blades into their caps? Oh, jeez. Okay, then. Fine, I'm interested. So if you do your research, you can see that the game is trying to draw from actual gang activity in London from the 1860s. But it looks like Ubisoft just didn't manage to make up their mind about which gangs are actually in the game. But not to worry, because I've got you covered. Today, I'm Sherlock Holmesing the heck out of Assassin's Creed Syndicate to put Jacob and Evie in their rightful place. Just call me Chair Matt Pat Holmes. Uh, Columpat. Matlock! Wait a minute. And hey, just as a disclaimer here, I have not played the game yet. It's supposed to come out tomorrow. Well, as I'm recording this, it's actually supposed to be like a week from now, but you get the idea. So this is all speculation theory. There are no real spoilers here, and we're only going off of the evidence that we can see in trailers and press releases. So when the game does finally come out, it'll be interesting to see how close we were based on just the evidence we were given. All right, so we need to know a little bit more about the gang we're trying to take down in this game. And let me tell you, there was no shortage of English gangs in the 1860s. Nope. While America was frittering away its time with little trifles like the Civil War and the end of slavery, London was focused on the really important stuff, like whether the High Rips or the Green Gate Gang were repping the West End. No, Governor, we were here first, and we have tickets to see Hairspray on Thursday. This hasn't been your turf since Cats opened. West End Story. So, where do we start? Well, at this time, London was a crazy town. Literally everything was changing. The Industrial Revolution had just happened. And as a result, there were thousands of poor and blue-collar factory workers there for the first time. People were also questioning the ruling class, the social system, even religion, because Charles Darwin's Origin of the Species had just come out. Funny story there, Charles is actually supposed to show up in the game, so be ready for that uncomfortable conversation tree about how all the assassins are descended from an ancient ape assassin, who was himself descended from a tadpole assassin. Anyway, the game takes on the other big change happening in London in 1868, politics. That that 
that year, there was a huge reform happening that would give more rights to the poor working class. When you're playing the game, you're fighting for that revolution, while the Templars are paying off the gang, the Blighters, to stop you. The question is, though, who are the Blighters? As I mentioned, there were no Blighters gangs in real life, so we need to figure out which gang they would have theoretically belonged to. And to do that, we might as well start at the top, with the most famous London gang, the Mohawks. <laughs> Weirdly enough, they got their name from the Native American Indian tribe and used to run around London killing and disfiguring people like they thought the American Indians were doing out in the US. Their most famous incident was shoving an old woman into a barrel after cutting off her nose, then rolling her down one of the biggest hills in London. What type of a place did you guys think America was? Jeez. These guys were brutal. And thankfully, they aren't the blighters from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Unlike a lot of other London gangs, the Mohawks weren't poor or working class. They were aristocrats. They're thought to be one of the biggest inspirations for A Clockwork Orange because they were basically just bored rich kids who did terrible, terrible things. And in the game, you can see that the Blighters are living in slums, not mansions, and they're wearing working class clothes and not the silk ties and top hats the Mohawks were known for. The thing to remember about the Blighters is that they're being paid off by the Templars in the game. These people are desperate for cash. They have no other means of survival. The Mohawks, on the other hand, were known as a gentleman's gang because they didn't actually steal anything. They just maimed people for fun. As a result, they would have no reason to work with the Templars in the context of Syndicate. So we need a working class gang. Our next candidate is the High Rip Gang. They started out in Liverpool and thought of violence as the only way to escape their lives of poverty. So far, that sounds like what we need. The areas they came from had up to 60% unemployment, and if you were born there, you had almost a 50% chance of dying before before you turn five. That all sounds great! Well, great in the sense that it matches a lot of what we're looking for and not in terms of quality of life. But the problem here is that that's all we got. The High Rips almost exclusively used belts and knives that they called bleeders as weapons. But in the game you see that our blighters are using plenty of guns. And more importantly, it's been announced that there will be some versions of the game that have Jack the Ripper storylines to play through. And while there's no definitive proof, it's widely thought that Jack the Ripper had ties to the High Rip gang. Either Either as a member or as an associate. Thing is, his storyline doesn't start until the 1880s. If you've beaten the game in 1868 and you're playing against the High Rip Gang, you would have destroyed the gang that Jack the Ripper comes from before he's even around. You would have essentially beaten him before his story even begins. So as long as the storyline is in the game, we can safely assume you're not fighting the High Rips. And the other more important issue is that most of their victims worked on boats or in harbors. In the game though, the Blighters aren't centered around any docks. As such, it's a tenuous match at best. But there's one other huge difference here. Women. One issue we haven't addressed yet is that in the game you're fighting a gang of both men and women. That actually narrows the field quite a bit. Most of the gangs in 1860s London were boys clubs, but there were a few notable exceptions. The most famous female gang in London was the 40 Elephants Gang, which would probably be number one on Matthew Santoro's top 10 list of cutest gang names of all time. These women committed decades worth of crimes because of a little loophole in London shopping laws. Even though women at the time couldn't vote, own property, get a divorce, or even open a bank account, there was one thing that they could do completely alone. Shop. It was like the ultimate way to get out of shopping with your wife. Make it illegal to shop with her. Male shopkeepers would leave women completely alone in the stores, at which point the 40 Elephants gang would make off with massive amounts of stuff, practically cleaning out the shop. Unlike their male counterparts, the 40 Elephants gang weren't primarily interested in killing, they were interested in gaining property, which was something women couldn't do at the time. Their members were chosen either for their beauty or their brawn, with smaller women doing the delicate shoplifting and their Amazonian-like counterparts making sure the deals didn't go south. But how does this relate to the game? Well, first of all, the motives line up. This game is about making bank, whether it's stealing from stores or taking bribes from the Templars to stop Jake and Evie, but here's the really cool part. In the game, we clearly see a mix of male and female gang enemies, but the 40 Elephants gang were all females, but that's okay. The thing about the 40 Elephants gang is that they still had trouble operating completely independently since women had so little mobility in Victorian England. So to actually move the goods that they stole, they had to partner with another gang, the Elephant and Castle Mob. <laughs> okay, seriously, what is with 
elephants in gang names. Oh, it's it's like a neighborhood in London, right next to Lion Lane and Panda Park, I'm sure. Okay, so the Elephant and Castle would help move merch and keep the peace for the 40 Elephant Gang, and this partnership created one of the first equal opportunity gang experiences, just like you see in the game. And if you're not convinced with just a motive in the demographics, we also have the power of geography. The 40 Elephants Gang historically centralized their power around the Southwark and Westminster boroughs of London, both of which are controlled by female mini bosses in the game. The city of London Borough is also run by an NPC called Bloody Nora, who seems to be a reference to a real life member of the 40 Elephants, a woman named Alice Diamond, or the Diamond Queen. The devs couldn't put Alice directly into the game because historically she didn't join the 40 Elephants for another 30 years or so, but it's reasonable to assume that the game is paying an homage to her in the character of Bloody Nora. In the alpha gameplay footage we've seen from the game so far, and remember we haven't played it yet, you can see Bloody Nora in action. In real life, Alice Diamond ran her own region of London, carrying all sorts of weapons that she used to assault police in her territory, sometimes dressing like a man and strategically using men like the one from Elephant and Castle to do her dirty work. She was also known for her daring escapes, evading the law by making a fast exit or jumping into the nearest getaway carriage. In the scene with Bloody Nora, you can see almost all of these characteristics. She's a strong woman dressed in traditional men's clothes, surrounded by her Elephant and Castle henchmen, but she also has her own weapons on her for protection. Then you end up giving chase to her, which means she's athletic, and you see her hijack a carriage completely on her own and drive off for you to catch her, making one of her signature getaways. It's a pretty cool list of comparisons, and this is talking about the alpha gameplay. But the final in-game detail is actually another character homage, the criminal mastermind of London, Maxwell Roth. At least that's what he's known as in the game. Again, there was no direct equivalent to him in 1868, but wait another 30 years or so and you'd meet the new head of London crime, Billy Kimber. If you watch Peaky Blinders, like we mentioned before, you've probably heard of this guy because, man, he was everywhere. He was the head of a whole crime conglomerate in London in the late 19th and early 20th century, including overseeing the Elephant and Castle, and by proxy, our gal, Alice Diamond. As of now, we don't know much about Maxwell other than what we see in the trailer, but there is one key detail we can determine from the gameplay. If Roth is indeed the one running the crime scene in Syndicate, he operates by gaining the loyalty of the gangs around the city. I mean, look, the gameplay has you shown winning the city back, neighborhood by neighborhood, as you gain the loyalty of the gangs you defeat. This perfectly matches Billy Kimber's strategy in real life. His grand scheme didn't involve taking down rival gangs, it involved annexing them, adding them to his kingdom, so to speak. Over time, he became a legend, uniting small, independent gangs and building a reputation for being charismatic, dressing well, and doing some crazy crazy stuff, like biting live rats in half. Seriously, Ozzy, you have got nothing on this guy. He was intense, put together, and with all our other evidence, ruled over the same gangs as Maxwell Roth. I know we haven't played the game yet, but my money is definitely on this guy. So to wrap things up here, when you're playing the game as Jacob and Evie, you know exactly who you're dealing with. The 40 Elephants and the Elephant and Castle gangs, along with their super mob boss, Billy Kimber. Based on the way they look, low class, who they are, male and female, where they're centered, in the specific boroughs where our real life gangs were headquartered, and who their leaders are. Real life gangs Alice Diamond and Billy Kimber. And with all that evidence, I hope we're right. It would be pretty cool to find out that this is what Ubisoft intended, but there's one more thing here that has to be mentioned. If you think about the historical context you're playing in, it actually changes the game quite a bit. You go into video games thinking about the good guys and the bad guys, and I'm sure in the new AC game the bad guys will be doing plenty of bad guy stuff, but in the context of real history, things aren't as black and white. Almost all of the gangs in Victorian London were basically just doing what what they needed to do to survive. So talking about a good guy versus a bad guy doesn't really work. The real enemy here was the desperation of their situation. Remember, in Syndicate, the Blighters are only fighting you because they're being paid off by the Templars. It's probably the most legitimate way most of those people could have made money. It makes you think a little bit harder about the awesome in-game kills, when in history they might not be any better off than you are. So remember the power you hold in your hands as an assassin, and think about the people you're trying to kill. As we learned in last week's Destiny video, the lines between light and dark aren't always that clear cut. Ha! <laughs> but enough of all that deep morality stuff. I think I've solved the entire FNAF franchise, so if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go start putting that one together. And in the meantime, remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Ah! Welcome back to the Super, Super Amazing, Amazing End Card Tournament. tournament.
For last time, I was able to convince 73% of you that that floating orb in Destiny's Sky is something not to be trusted. In other news, still no word from Bungie on making me the voice of a ghost, though. The hashtag GhostPat campaign continues. Seriously, Bungie, the theorists demand it. This week, since I didn't really feel like asking you which industrial-era London gang would you like to join, I wanted to do something different. I'm gonna put some colors on the screen. Click on your favorite color. Simple as that. And if you're on mobile or tablet, cast your vote by leaving a comment on what your favorite color is. I'm really curious. What color are you gonna click on? And in the end, help your favorite color become the best favorite color of all the colors. And then next week, find out if your color was the color to rule them all. Now once you click, you'll get taken to the channel page where I would recommend you subscribe, but more importantly, check out some of our other episodes. There have been a lot of new ones this month, including all of our past ones on Assassin's Creed, including an episode that is my all-time least favorite episode of Game Theory, Surviving the Assassin's Creed Leap of Faith. And it has nothing to do with the episode itself, or even the subject matter. There were just a couple of research bits in there that made me feel uncomfortable. We'll, uh, talk about that someday in the future. So if you want to see the episode that still makes me cringe when I watch it, check it out. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a meeting with Mjolnir.